Let us be grateful to the people who make us happy. They are charming gardeners who make our souls blossom. The real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. Remembrance of things past is not necessarily the remembrance of things as they were. Every reader, as he reads, is actually the reader of himself. The writer's work is only a kind of optical instrument. He provides the reader so he can discern what he might never have seen in himself without this book. The reader's recognition in himself of what the book says, proof of the book's truth. Happiness is beneficial for the body, but it is grief that develops the powers of the mind. Love is a striking example of how little reality means to us. My destination is no longer a place, rather a new way of seeing. We don't receive wisdom, we must discover it for ourselves after a journey that no one else can take for us or spare us. If a little dreaming is dangerous, the cure is not to dream less, but to dream more, to dream all the time. We are healed of a suffering only by experiencing it to the full. Desire makes everything blossom. Possession makes everything wither and fade. People do not die for us immediately, but remain bathed in a sort of aura of life which bears no relation to true immortality, but through which they continue to occupy our thoughts in the same way as when they were alive. It is as though they were traveling abroad. There are perhaps no days of our childhood we lived so fully as those we believe we left without having lived them, those we spent with a favorite book. Let yourself be inert. Wait till the incomprehensible power that has broken you restores you a little. I say a little, for henceforth, you will always keep something broken about you. Tell yourself this, too, for it is a kind of pleasure to know that you will never love less, that you will never be consoled, that you will constantly remember more and more. Time which changes people, does not alter the image we have of them. Thanks to art, instead of seeing one world only, our own, we see that world multiply itself, and we have at our disposal as many worlds as there are original artists. Worlds more different from one another 
than those which revolve in infinite space. Worlds which, centuries after the extinction of the fire from which their light first emanated, send us still, each one, its special radiance. Everything great in the world is done by neurotics. They alone founded our religions and created our masterpieces. It is often hard to bear the tears we ourselves have caused. The thirst for something other than what we have, to bring something new, even if it is worse, some emotion, some sorrow, when our sensibility, which happiness has silenced like an idle harp, wants to resonate under some hand, even a rough one, and even if it might be broken by it. People who are not in love fail to understand how an intelligent man can suffer because of a very ordinary woman. This is like being surprised that anyone should be stricken with cholera because of a creature so insignificant as the common bacillus. The bonds between ourselves and another person exists only in our minds. Memory, as it grows fainter, loosens them, and notwithstanding the illusion by which we want to be duped, and which, out of love, friendship, politeness, deference, duty, we dupe other people. We exist alone. Man is the creature who cannot escape from himself, who knows other people in himself. And when he asserts the contrary, he is lying. There is no one, no matter how wise he is, who has not in his youth said things or done things that are so unpleasant to recall in later life that he would expunge them entirely from his memory if that were possible. But sometimes illumination comes to our rescue at the very moment when all seems lost. We have knocked at every door and they open on nothing until, at last, we stumble unconsciously against the only one through which we can enter. The kingdom we have sought in vain a hundred years and it opens. In his younger days, a man dreams of possessing the heart of the woman he loves. Later, the feeling that he possesses the heart of a woman may be enough to make him fall in love with her. If we are to make reality endurable, we must all nourish a fantasy or two. The places we have known do not belong solely to the world of space in which we situate them for our greater convenience. They were only a thin slice among contiguous impressions which formed our life at that time, 
the memory of a certain image is but regret for a certain moment. And houses, roads, avenues are as fleeting, alas, as the years. Love is space and time measured by the heart. Pleasures are like photographs. In the presence of the person we love, we take only negatives, which we develop later at home, when we have at our disposal once more our inner dark room, the door of which it is strictly forbidden to open while others are present. No doubt, very few people understand the purely subjective nature of the phenomenon that we call love, or how it creates, so to speak, a supplementary person distinct from the person whom the world knows by the same name, a person most of whose constituent elements are derived from ourselves. One cannot change, that is to say, become a different person while continuing to acquiesce to the feelings of the person one has ceased to be. All our final decisions are made in a state of mind that is not going to last. It is our imagination that is responsible for love, not the other person. I think that life would suddenly seem wonderful to us if it were threatened to die, as you say. Just think of how many projects, travels, love affairs, studies, it, our life hides from us made invisible by our laziness, which, certain of a future, delays them incessantly. But let all this threaten to become impossible forever. How beautiful it would become again. Ah, if only the cataclysm doesn't happen this time. We won't miss visiting the new galleries of the Louvre, throwing ourselves at the feet of Miss X, making a trip to India. The cataclysm doesn't happen. We don't do any of it because we find ourselves back in the heart of normal life where negligence deadens desire and yet we shouldn't have needed the cataclysm to love life today. It would have been enough to think that we are humans and that death may come this evening. The only true voyage, the only bath in the fountain of youth, would be not to visit the strange lands, but to possess other eyes. To see the universe through the eyes of another, of a hundred others. To see the hundred universes that each of them sees, that each of them is. And this we do with great artists. With artists like these, we really fly from star to star. Even in the most insignificant details of our daily life, none of us can be said to constitute a material whole. Our social personality is created by the thoughts of other people.
I wished to see storms only on those coasts where they raged with the most violence. Perhaps it is not being that is our true state, and all our dream of life is non-existent. But if so, we feel these phrases of music, these conceptions which exist in relation to our dream, must be nothing either. We shall perish, but we have as hostages these divine captives who will follow and share our fate. And death in their company is somehow less bitter, less inglorious, perhaps even less probable. The only true paradise is paradise lost. Our desires cut across one another. And in this confused existence, it is rare for happiness to coincide with the desire that clamored for it. May you always see a blue sky overhead, my young friend. And then, even when the time comes, as it has come for me, when the woods are black, when the night is falling fast, you will be able to console yourself as I do by looking up at the sky.